Hello, welcome to Steven Speak Extra Speak, uh, episode 34. Uh, it might sound a little bit different on the microphone, because I've been tweaking the settings. So I, I want to make sure that it's uh, coming across okay. I don't know, maybe maybe it won't do, maybe it won't, maybe it will, I don't know, who knows, who knows, I don't even know, because um, I am not you. Um, anyway, today's episode is going to be about, um, what is it going to be about? What am I doing it about? Um, today's episode is going to be about, um, I've had a complete brain meltdown again, oh my god, oh, uh, seeing nudity as a kid, there you go. Uh, run VT. No, not VT. Um, intro. That's there you go. There you are. There we are. There you go. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Stephen Speak Extra Speak. A little more prattle on everything and nothing. I'm getting used to it now. I just left my microphone on pause, uh, on mute, pause, whatever. Um, anyway, um, today's subject is um, kind of like a, 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 an odd one, really. And it, the, the, the idea from it came about of uh, kind of watching James Bond or, or listening to James Bond themes recently and um, watching the titles for a James Bond theme and just thinking about them, basically, and just thinking when I was a kid that um, it was probably like the first bit of nudity that I saw, um, and trying to catch a glimpse of uh, side boob or something, because a lot of the early James Bond films, um, like Roger Moore era, era as well, the ladies in the titles were genuinely like real, obviously real ladies, but they were like proper naked, and sometimes just painted or silhouetted, so if you watch them films, as a, as a as as a eager teenage boy that I I was, um, you can see like boob jiggles and and the, the proper outlines of ladies, and that was probably like the first like they were probably the first real time when I was actually thinking like 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 a teenage boy probably probably would do, and um, thinking that's a, that's a lady, and I can see bits of that lady that I probably shouldn't be allowed to see bits of. But yeah, this isn't a film that my mum and dad are telling me not to watch. And you know, James Bond films are a little bit raunchy, aren't they? You know, they have got a little bit of um, sauce in them, let's say. Um, and yeah, but then it's really embarrassing when you get to that age when you're allowed to stay up and watch films with your parents that, you know, like, let's face it, like the, the, the James Bond films, when they had a bit of a role on the sack, you never saw anything. It was heavily implied, a lot of innuendo and stuff like that. Never used to be able to say that word when I was a kid, by the way, innuendo. It was a very difficult word for me to say, but um, I think I can say it now. I think I said it right. Um, yeah, but as a, as a kid, you, you knew kind of what they were doing uh, when you got to a certain age, and, you know, the women were always scantily clad, and they were always very beautiful, and um, but you never saw anything um, kind of over the top. Um, it was to say it was all implied. Uh, and the titles were very, like, very heavily implied and a bit sexual, sexualized. And yeah, as a, as a teenage kid, and and like, like from ten onwards, you know, you start thinking certain things, like maybe not to the like proper adult thoughts, obviously, uh, but you start noticing girls when you're when you're about ten, eleven, properly. And um, yeah, by by teenage years, I was, you know, you're thinking, oh, well, that James Bond film I've just watched, never noticed that before, never noticed the boobs in that in that opening. You know, because um, I think maybe as a kid I thought they were drawings. You know, I thought they were like lady, lady drawings, lady, lady drawings. I don't know how my brain thinks. Um, yeah, but then when your parents start letting you stay up and watch things that are a little bit more adult, and um, you are maybe watching things through um, like closed eyes a little bit because you, you and you don't want to look, you don't want to make eye contact with your parents, like. Really don't want to make eye contact. I think I think one of the I think one of the first things I I watched, like as a sex scene with my parents was um, I think I I recall this one really vividly, and I don't know if it was because it was quite it was quite kind of explicit. I think and my memory recalls it as being quite explicit, and I I was probably oh I I was probably younger than twelve, maybe like thirteen and below, and I used to like the program Cracker, and they rarely used to let me stay up and watch it, but occasionally they did. So we were watching Cracker together, and it started, I think, like, half eight, quarter to nine, something like that, maybe, maybe nine o'clock. 
the like going past the watershed as they used to call it you know past that nine o'clock time where you know kids shouldn't really be watching and um yeah it was um it was a it was a weird weird thing and it was quite i remember this this guy i think the girl got murdered in the end actually but it was like a couple of students or something and uh, he like literally had her up against the like they were both completely naked and you couldn't see a lot you could see her boobs I remember he had it like up against the door and he was proper going for it. And it's just kind of like, like, you know, you didn't, it was in the days you didn't have anything, you didn't have a phone to look at and you didn't have anything to like grab. So I was just like, kind of, uh, kind of like, going, duh, 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 duh. like, and I know me, I could feel my mum and dad looking at each other as I say, holy crap, this is, this is a bit much. Like, this is, we've let him watch this before and this has never been, this has never been the case with this program kind of thing. And, um, I was just hoping they didn't say anything about sex to me, to be honest, because I was just like, please don't mention it. It's happened. Let's get on with it. And they didn't really have a problem with me seeing like a bit of gore and stuff. Like, you know, a lot of the problems back then, like they'd show the dead body, but there was nothing. It was nothing explicit, really. It was like maybe a bit of blood on it. And it was more like about the storyline. Whereas I think sometimes in shows now they do it for like kind of shock factor and like the, the effects are a bit more realistic and stuff. But yeah, back in the day, it wasn't like that. Um, and I remember like, watching that, and I could not wait to go to bed, if I'm honest with you, I just wanted to leave the room, but I really wanted to watch Cracker, and um, I think there was, like, another sex scene later on in the episode as well, because it was quite a sexualised, like, it was, like, a quite a sexualised episode, I'm pretty sure it was Cracker anyway, like, I'm 99% sure it was Cracker, uh, with Robbie Coltrane, God rest him, uh, lost another great actor in him, um, yeah, and... I think that was the catalyst then that like my mum and dad knew that I kind of knew some stuff about sex and I could feel them like wanting to have that talk with me and yeah, it was just bad times all around really. It was like I didn't I didn't I didn't like it. I did not like it. And yeah, it was it was um it was one of the things that I, I was really hoping that um you know, they they would just leave it alone and they wouldn't come back to me and they wouldn't they wouldn't um they wouldn't make a big thing of it. And I remember we were watching something a few weeks later and it was on like a sitcom. Maybe might have been a few months later and they made like a sexual joke and I laughed at it and my dad was like, What are you laughing at? And I was like, Oh crap. You know, it's just it's just one of the moments where you just want to die and all the moments with your parents and I can't I kinda of can't wait for it to like happen to me when I become a parent because it's quite funny actually. If you think about it from the other side like they must have like maybe been a bit like oh you know a little lad because I'm like the youngest like or a little lad's you know growing up and he's learning about sex and what's not. Um, but I, f- I feel that I feel that um, <laughs> I feel like it's kind of a bit, a bit fun as well because once they know that and they're and they're okay with it, I think that's the thing that they have to be okay with it is that they um, they can play with you a little bit with it. So. D- Another thing I remember is we were watching the news one day and there was this guy on the news and the news report was called, was it called John Condon? Condon or something like that, or Barry Condon or whatever his name is. He was a BBC reporter or ITV reporter. And I said to Gavin, I didn't realise my mum would come back into the room and I said to my brother, like, <laughs> Condon. And uh, obviously because it sounds like Condon, we don't need to point that out to you, but I'm going to. And yeah, my brother laughed. And then my mum came back in and was like, what, what's, what are you laughing at? And I was like, nothing, nothing, just his name. She was like, and I don't know why I added just his name, because there was no need to. I could have just made anything up. I said, oh, me and Gavin are having a joke. And, and she mustn't have actually heard what I'd said. So I could have maybe got away with it. Or just denied all knowledge. And she was like, what's, what's funny about his name? And I was like, well, it's con- his name, isn't it? Like, look at his name. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, I don't really want to say it. Don't make me say it. And because you don't do it like you, you know, they know what you mean, but you don't want to have to say it like and she was like, what's wrong with his name? And I was like, well, his name's funny. It's like, sounds like something, doesn't it? What does it sound like? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Don't know what it sounds like. I have no idea. And that's that's kind of what I stuck with then. Don't know what it sounds like. It just sounds funny to me. Don't know why. It just sounds funny. And she was like, oh, OK, then. Um, And then I think the, the, the release kind of came when. I think they knew I'd had sex education because I'm pretty sure they you get sent a letter parents like saying your kids are going to have sex education, which we had in like year seven at school, like the first year of high school. And um, my dad came to my room one night. <laughs> it was the most awkward thing 
and just basically went, hmm. He came to that age, I was like, Dad, I know, don't have to say anything. And he went, right, that great, thanks, brilliant. <laughs> he just kind of left. And um, it, it kind of chilled out a bit then. Um, but that my mum became obsessed about me having sex, and that, that's a story for a different day. Uh, I, I'm, I've got a caveat this, and I've said this before, that like when I was like 16, I looked like an eight-year-old. And so there was no sex going to be had by me, like at all, in the whole of school, and even into like the, like the leaving of school. I I looked like a child, so there was no there was no. I don't know what she was worried about. Like yes, I was cute, but that's not what girls want. They they want um the the sporty jock, kind of muscular, uh, strapping lad. And I I was definitely not that, unfortunately for me. Um yeah, so never mind. Uh, but yeah, but. I just thought the other day I had this weird thought, and I thought, you know what? Like, I, it, when I was watching these 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 uh, opening scenes to James Bond, I was thinking, my God, that brings back memories of me realizing they're all nude and real people, and they're not not things. And I and I, I actually, that's probably the first proper bit of a view of a of a woman that I uh, that I got. Um, I'll end on this: the very first view of a woman, um. And I was shocked, and I was only young when I saw it. Was I was home with my mum on a Saturday, it was like a Saturday or a Sunday, and I was watching Carry On Camping. And in that film, they're doing like aerobics outside, and Barbara Windsor, uh, like st- explodes her bra off, like explodes her bikini top off. And I remember one thinking, "Oh my god, there are her boobs," and also being very disgusted that they showed that. They showed that. That's that's the way my brain was thinking. They can't show that in the daytime, and I must have been about eight years old. Um, so somewhere like I was below ten, so yeah, so even at that age, my my, my brain went to like that's terrible. They shouldn't show this. Um, uh, but anyway, that'll end it on that. Um, yes. So just think when when your kids and stuff or, or people you know have uh, watching James Bond, they may have been uh, copping an eye at the uh, the girls. I don't think they have them as much in the latest ones. They've learned though, haven't they? You know, equality and all that sort of stuff. Um, you just can't paste naked women everywhere. Um. Yeah, but you know, was that was it the same for you? If if you're a man or a woman, obviously, um, was that your first exposure? Like, what was your first exposure to nakedness? Like, um, some people have like you know the dad's porn under the bed or something, but I I don't recall that to be honest. Uh, more like my brothers to be honest. Uh, but mum doesn't know too much about that, so we'll we'll keep strong. Not that she listens to this. She doesn't. She hasn't worked out how to download it yet. Uh, Anyway, right, I'll leave you there. Uh, Take care of yourselves, and I'll speak to you soon. You've been listening to Stephen Speak Extra Speak. Thanks for listening to my unscripted prattle on everything and nothing. Visit stephenspeak.com for updates, information, and my blog. You can follow more updates on social media at stephenspeakpc. Thanks very much, and I'll speak to you soon.